And Friday marks the end of a rough week for the banking industry. Reuters estimates U.S. banks have lost over $100 billion in start market value over the past two days. The FDIC, which insures deposits and supervises financial institutions, also took control of Silicon Valley Bank and its $300 billion in assets and deposits. It's the largest bank to fail since the 2008 financial crisis. Joining us now is Emily Flitter. She's a finance reporter for The New York Times. Emily, did the Silicon Valley Bank failure come because of market conditions or just poor management? It was a little of both. The bank could have avoided what happened to it if it had properly accounted for the risk of rising interest rates. Um, but in order to get more uh, yield on its investments, it had a lot of holdings of long-term treasury bonds and mortgage-backed securities, and then realized too late that it needed to sell some of those things and sold them at a loss. And depositors watched it all happen and freaked out, really. I mean, this was a panic. Yeah, it looks like that. Other banks are absorbing major stock losses as well. Um, is this the beginning of a larger sell-off? Well, it, whatever bank stocks do, that's separate from what happens to the banks themselves. Banks don't rely on the capital that they get from selling shares uh, in the stock market to be capitalized as banks. They have to do all kinds of other things to make sure that they have the cash on hand that they need to operate and to give depositors their money whenever they want it. Um, Silicon Valley Bank ran into a problem where depositors all rushed to the bank at once and tried to get their money back. We certainly should all hope that that doesn't happen again. It's a really bad situation. But the good news is that there's no indication that it is happening uh, with the severity that it happened to Silicon Bank right now at another bank. Of course, there good. are worries, but nothing serious. Well, that's uh, good to hear. So does all of this complicate the Federal Reserve's next steps? I think market conditions would have to get really bad before the Fed would change course over this. There's a, one really important thing to note here is that the turmoil that we're seeing, the, the, the biggest share price declines that we're seeing are all in a sector of banks that are regional banks. It's um, they're, they have assets of between $50 billion and $250 billion. Once you get above that and you start talking about the country's biggest banks, you see a lot more stability. Those banks get stress tested. They have different capital requirements. And so far, their stock prices have gone down a little bit, but we're not seeing uh, any kind of selling in their stock the way we've been seeing in these regional banks where they've actually had their stock trading halted today at various times because the shares were falling too quickly. So back to the jobs report, uh, where does that leave rates? And do you see a cap in the near future? And, and what do you think it looks like, 8 or or 9%? You know, it's really hard to make that prediction. Um, one thing I can say is that Silicon Valley Bank uh, tried to bet with too much certainty on on how quickly and how high rates would go, and they lost that bet. And um, I certainly wouldn't make one myself. Um, the Fed has said that they are going to keep raising interest rates in order to cool inflation. And I think the reason you saw the whole stock market go down today is because we're not seeing enough signs that those interest rate increases are having the effect that they need to have before the Fed stops. Emily Flitter, thank you for your reporting. Thanks for having me.